Good morning. Welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church of Columbus, Georgia. We're glad that you're here to join us as we worship God by offering our prayers and singing songs and listening to scripture. Please come in with us that we may worship God together. Good morning and Merry Christmas. We will be called to worship by our prayer, litany prayer in our bulletin. The Word was made flesh, Alleluia, Alleluia, and dwelt among us. Jesus, Son of the living God, splendor of the Father, light eternal. Jesus, King of glory, Son of righteousness, born of the Virgin Mary. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Lord. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus, Prince of peace, shepherd of souls, perfect in holiness. Glory to you, Lord. Let us worship God.
please be seated. And let us pray. Why do we pray together? We are a community. If one of us suffers, we all suffer. If one of us rejoices, we all rejoice. Let us offer our prayers in unison. God of grace and truth, in Jesus Christ you came among us as light shining in darkness. We confess that we have not welcomed the light or trusted good news to be good. We have closed our eyes to glory in our midst, expecting little and hoping for less. Forgive our doubt and renew our hope so that we may receive the fullness of your grace and live in the truth of Christ the Lord. Jesus Christ, whose birth we celebrate today, says, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep, the good shepherd that came that they may have life and might have it abundantly. Friends, hear and believe the good news of the good shepherd. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Please be seated. Why do you put those on? Why do we 
breath press us up. It starts to surprise, you can't see it. So, yeah, there's, there's a sense of joy, a sense of happiness. Does it make you glad when you open up the present? Does it take off the present? No. I mean, is, is it, when you wrap the present with maybe mom and dad or brothers and sisters, does that feel like good too? Good morning again to everybody, and again wishing you all a very Merry Christmas. I ask you to please sign the attendance pad at the end of your pew, and mark it, and return it to the point of origin, and uh, be sure and greet one another following our worship service today. A few announcements to highlight. Holy cow! It returns the survey on which we did an extensive work last spring. Uh, some groups will be meeting in the new year. The information is in your bulletin, ways that you can sign up for these gatherings in early January to discuss the results, to give input, to talk amongst yourselves. This information will in turn be informative for our pastor nominating committee that will be hitting the ground running in the new year. Uh, but it will just be a good way for us to continue uh, New Year's resolution putting the church forward in 2017. This week is a quiet week at the church office um, and then things that are taking place, but really starting in the new year, we'll be hitting the ground running on Wednesday, January 4th. There is the service uh, for healing and wholeness with which we typically begin our new year, January 11th. We go into of course, church family programming, programming for children. Uh, Stephanie Boaz will be leading a Bible study, The Art of Marriage. A six-week small group will be taking place. Things are kicking off, so please read the bulletin, see what's taking place in the new year. Uh, it's going to be exciting, and it's going to be coming fast. As we prepare now for the proclamation of God's Word, let us sing our hymn for illumination, Go Tell It on the Mountain.
Our first lesson today comes from the prophecy of Isaiah, picking up in the 52nd chapter. Listen now to the Word of God. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace and who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices, together they sing for joy. For in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted His people, and He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared His holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading this morning comes from the book of John. It is John's telling of the announcement and the arrival of this Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him, but to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become the children of God, who was born not of blood, 
or of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The word of the Lord. He's a Johnny, he's a Guatemalan Johnny Appleseed. Um, he witnessed in his own uh, community uh, tragedies of civil war. 
And yet, he did not allow that to embitter him, but he allowed that to be a place to form his own faith and to help him serve his own people. Who are the people that you would name in your own life? I've known and had the privilege of being with each one of those in various places and times. But who are the people that you would name that have shaped your faith? Maybe a parent, maybe a sibling, maybe somebody outside the church, maybe somebody that you see in the greater scheme of things, the great heroes, the Mother Teresas of the, of the world. But there are people, and they are not just far away, they are close to you. There are many different ways that the Word became flesh to share the light. None of our experiences are comparable, though, to the one that John speaks of, because John gives the story that allows us all to share in, the, in that story. So we come to this place. We come to this place of arrival, this road to Bethlehem, where we know that the hope of God will exist no matter what. We know the peace of God happens in sometimes very small ways in our lives. We know the love of God that decides to give life no matter what the cost. And we know the joy of God that is the real fulfillment of God's own desire. And all of that comes to be borne witness to in the Christ, in the birth of Jesus Christ, who came to share that life and hope. We arrive to hear God's love. We have heard that testimony. So now, now we will depart and we will carry that light out into the world. We will share that wonder in the places we find. We will let others know that the Word became flesh to dwell among us full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you now to please stand for our affir affirmation of faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Please be seated. And let us pray. Almighty, gracious, and loving God, we gather here today, this day to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God the Son. And we pray today for faith and for hope and for love. We pray today for faith, that we would grow in our faith, that our faith is renewed for those whose faith is strained. May there be healing and may there be clarity. For those who are in a season of doubt, may they find the answers that they are seeking. May they be at peace with the doubts that they have. O oh God the Father, grow our faith. And we pray for hope. Hope at this time of year as we look back, as we begin to look forward. We pray for restoration in those relationships that are strained. We pray for healing that comes for those dealing with illness as well as those dealing with a season of trial. We give thanks for all the good things that we have. We give thanks for the hope that we have today, as well as we pray for the hope for tomorrow and for the hope that can grow through the power of Christ, God the Son. And, O oh God, the Holy Spirit, we pray for love. We give thanks for those that are around us now, friends and family, dear connections that often lasts decades long. Today we remember empty places at the table and those who have gone before. We give thanks for them. And where we need comfort, may we be comforted with your loving arms. May we be renewed in our love, renewed in our hope, and renewed in our faith. We pray to you, O God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and we pray with the confidence of the children of God the words that Jesus Christ gave to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In a moment, I will call for the offering. As a reminder, today is a regular Sunday, regular offering. But also at this time, we continue to receive the Christmas offering. The envelope should be in your bulletin. If, I mean, excuse me, bulletin, in your pews. If you're so inclined, that will go to the joy gift offering, which goes in turn for colleges, certain colleges supported by the Presbyterian Church United States, a USA, as well as um, for a special fund for retired servants of the church. Now let's continue our worship as we present to God our tithes, our offerings, our gifts, and our very selves.
Almighty, all gracious, all giving God, we give to you today these tithes, these offerings, and these gifts to further your work here and abroad. We not only give you the fruit of our labor, we give you our commitments, our personal dedication, and our very lives. In Jesus' name, amen. I have a few bows left. If anybody would like one, please see me after the service. Because indeed, we do celebrate this day, this Christmas day, this Christmas day Sunday, because God sent a present to us in Christ. So as we celebrate that and we share that and we enjoy that and we sing familiar songs, and carols. Let us remember that God sent us not only to gather, but also to depart. And as we depart, go out into the world to love God and to do good work and to share God's role in, of justice. As the prophet Micah said, to love, to love God, to do justice, and to walk humbly with our Lord. And as we do that, may we share the power and the wonder of Christ's birth. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit surround us and be with us. May it accompany us with every breath we take in and every breath we give out. May it be with us with every step we take this day and always. Merry Christmas.
It's been a privilege to join you this day in worship. We're glad that you were here. First Presbyterian Church seeks to serve and minister in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor. Go in peace as you love and serve God.